Welcome back guys, in this video I will be testing LSFG 2.1 frame generation tech on my Steam Deck running on Windows 11. LSFG is still not compatible with SteamOS. LSFG is included with an application called Lossless Scaling that sells on Steam Store for around 7 US dollars. LSFG is basically a universal frame generator built using machine learning, works on any GPU whether it's from Intel, Nvidia or AMD, does not matter. For a good experience with any frame generation technique, the recommended minimum FPS is usually 60. In this way, you won't be observing a lot of frame generation related artifacts. Input delay will be in check as well. However, you can still use frame generation in games running at lower FPS values like 30 to 40. It's just that at these FPS values, the graphical artifacts will be more noticeable and input delay can be a problem. This is exactly what we are going to see in this video. As I own the LCD variant of Steam Deck, its display supports up to 60 Hz refresh rate. So I'll be capping the game's FPS to 30 and then I'll be using LSFG's X2 frame generation mode which will try to double the FPS going from 30 to 60. LSFG 2.1 even supports X3 frame generation mode. With this mode enabled, FPS will get tripled. Yes, you heard it right. But we will be required to cap the game's FPS to one third of the display's maximum refresh rate. This is why it's not recommended to be used with displays that support up to 60 hertz refresh rate only. Okay, I'll kick things off with GTA 5. It's the Steam version of the game. First, I'll be running it without LSFG. I'll launch Lossless Scaling application. Need to keep the app running in the background. It works as an overlay. Not using any of Lossless Scaling subscaling algorithms of LSFG 2.1 selected from the drop down bar under frame generation. X2 frame generation mode. I've enabled the performance mode. It is for weaker GPUs. Clip cursor setting enabled, raw FPS setting enabled, capture API, DXGI, and that's it. Click on settings here, start as administrator setting enabled, hotkey for enabling LSFG, control alt and S, close, minimize the window. I have connected my cosmic bud Solaris gamepad to Steam Deck via Bluetooth mode. In the background, Steam Deck tools and RTSS are running. Game settings. Display mode set to windowed borderless 800p resolution. FXAA enable. Also enable MSAA using it four times. Population density, variety, and distance scaling set to 50%. Most of the settings are set to very high. Quickly scroll down. Two times reflection MSAA. Motion blur disable. Start the story mode. There's Franklin. Here we are getting around 33 FPS. This is exactly what I wanted. Moving the camera around, observe the input response. Okay. Gameplay is a bit choppy. 30 to 40 FPS. Dex display does not support VR. Now I'll just cap the game's FPS to 30 and then enable LSFG. Steam Deck tools overlay, FPS limit set to 30. It basically uses RTSS to cap the FPS. And this is 30 FPS. Let's enable LSFG. And just press its hotkey. Yeah, it's working. Base FPS is around 30. FPS with frame generation enabled 60. Oh my god, it's really working. Can observe the added amount of smoothness. No way, this is 30 FPS. Sometimes Franklin's head flickers when I move the camera in complete circles like this. Not flickering now. You can definitely use LSFG in GTA 5 even when the game's FPS is capped at 30. Minor graphical artifact. Okay, I'll just drive around my vehicle. Follow Lama. Keep an eye on the frame pacing graph. Game's heart is not flickering. Animation looks so smooth. Almost hitting the GPU bottleneck. VRAM usage is around 3.8 GB. 
have set the UML buffer size to 4 GB from the index BIOS settings. Can't set it to a higher value than 4 GB on Windows. Impressed by the results in GTA 5. Now I'll be testing the next game. We'll be running one of my favorite games, Batman Arkham Knight. First, I'll run the game with a 60 FPS cap. Graphic settings Display mode set to windowed, no border, 800p resolution. In game vsync disabled. Low settings Motion blur disabled. Anti lasing enabled. Disable film grain. Texture filtering trilinear. We are in. There's Batman just casually walking around on the street. Empty area. Let me just glide around, check the game's performance. I'm getting a very variable FPS. Stunning visuals, difficult to believe that this game was released way back in 2015. Yes, you heard it right. I'm just looking for some thugs. I don't remember the controls now. I'm just call in my vehicle, the Batmobile. We'll be driving around in it. And there it is. Yeah, FPS dropped down to around 35, almost 30. Now I'll enable LSFG. Cap the FPS to 30 first. Press the hotkey for enabling LSFG, it's working now. Check out the added amount of smoothness. Easily observable, even when I am driving Batmobile. <laughs> Destroying the city, I'll engage in combat now. Okay, Batman's pointy ears are flickering. Oh my god, someone tackled me. That guy is done. <laughs> they ran away. As I was saying, Batman's pointy ears are flickering. Minor graphical artifact. Game is running so smoothly now. Finally found some thugs. Input delay is not a problem as you can see. Countering when enemy's head flashes red. Bigger pun white. Now I'll be testing the next game. Now I'll be running Elden Ring Shadow of War 3 expansion. It's very demanding on the GPU. So I'll be running it at a resolution lower than 720p. We'll be using FSR version 1 via LSFG to upscale the resolution to 800p. Change a few settings. Select AMD FSR from this drop down bar under scaling type. Sharpness level roughly 50%. Rest of the settings are left as this. You can use LSFG with Elden Ring even when it is running in online mode. Display mode set to borderless window. Resolution. 1024 by 640 this is the native resolution settings anti lasing and texture quality set to low SSAO depth of field and motion blur disable rest of the settings are set to low except for grass quality set it to medium and that's it there is a character big open area there is the great bridge right in front of me in Elden Ring, FPS is more stable on SteamOS than Windows. It's due to the availability of pre-compiled shaders on SteamOS. Yeah, here FPS is around 35, 30 to 40. Gameplay is choppy. See the frame pacing graph all over the place. No VRR. Okay, now I'll just cap the FPS to 30 and enable. 
LSFG. Image quality is looking a bit blurry. LSFG is working. Image quality is looking slightly sharper now. Resolution got upscaled to 720p. Can observe the added amount of smoothness. I'm looking for some graphical artifacts. Okay, there is some flickering when I move the camera in complete circles. Not a realistic scenario. When I move the camera at a normal speed, character model does not flicker. And that's good to see. Sprinting around, exploring the area on horseback. Some texture pop an issue is present in this game. Texture pop an issue again. The hell is this creature? <laughs> it's attacking me. There you go. Now I am running Fallout 4 next gen. Basically using the medium preset. 800p resolution. Advanced. Got race quality set to off. Best performance. Uncheck. Motion blur. Start the game. Borderless mode. First I will run the game with a 60fps cap. I load the Boston area known for its performance issues there is a character, I'll just turn on my flashlight in this area FPS is very variable I'll just demonstrate this I'm looking for some mongrels, there they are see FPS can suddenly drop from 60 to 40 This is why it's better to just cap the FPS to 30 and then enable LSFG for a stable 60 FPS. Frame pacing issues. Cap the FPS to 30. Enable LSFG. Yeah, it's working. can observe the added amount of smoothness ok so the crosshair is flickering not easy to observe this mm, there is some flickering going on minor graphical artifact games hurt is rendered properly and here is some gunshots proceed further can even hear a helicopter it's nearby looking for some mutants FPS with frame generation on 60 no way this is 30 FPS character's head is flickering happens sometimes it's a common LSFG related artifact when the base FPS is around 30 found some mutants 28 to 30 fps again lsfg is usable when the game is running at 30 fps oh my god look at this creature now i'll be testing the next game now i'll be running Wuthering waves version 1.1 it's the Epic Games version. Display settings using the low preset, full screen mode. Frame rate set to 60. Most of the settings are set to low, FSI enabled. Capsule AO, volumetric fog, volumetric lighting, and motion blur disabled, anti lazing enabled. Bloom and v disabled, crowd density set to low. 
This is my current location. I'm in the city of Jinzhou. This is my character rover. Just explore the area on foot. FPS is around 40 to 45. It's very variable. Frame pacing issues. FPS and it suddenly dropped down to it from 43. Use my glider. Very choppy gameplay. I'll just cap the FPS to 30 and then use LSFG. 30. LSFG enabled. Check out the input response can observe the added amount of smoothness no way this is 30 fps unfortunately the rover's head is flickering common frame generation related artifact when the base fps is around 30 use my grappling hook here intense flickering when I use my glider so you have to deal with these graphical artifacts when using LSFG in games that are running at around 30 fps intensity of these graphical artifacts will be less when the fps is on the higher side just load another area Central planes show you some combat. In this area is more demanding, good for testing. Switch among my characters. Looking for some tacit discord. Big creature. Just fight against the small fries. There, there. Spam attacks. Hitching is still present. Using Rover's ultimate. Need a lot of damage. Decent performance now on Steam Deck. Can definitely play. Current performance is way better than the performance of this game. Day one of its release. Time to conclude the video. LSFG 2.1 next to frame generation mode improved the performance of all of the games that I tested. Some minor graphical artifacts were present, like flickering of a character model's head. Crosshair was flickering in Fallout 4. Nothing extreme or too distracting. Input delay was not an issue even when the base FPS was around 30. The input delay latency is more perceivable when you are using a mouse instead of a gamepad. I really hope this application becomes compatible with SteamOS soon. So that's it with the video guys. I hope you find it useful. Thanks for watching and have a nice day.